John, it's a pleasure to welcome you. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you okay. for having me. Every space needs innovation. Mm -hmm. and, we've, and after some time, you have to disrupt your own space to look at new things that are happening. Otherwise, somebody else will do it for you. Correct. Yeah. So, wanted to learn from you how you look at your space and how you're disrupting it. Sure. Well, uh, you know, I've uh, been in the automotive business for about 18 years as a supplier of electronics from everything to engine control systems, to power distribution systems, to uh, vehicle to vehicle communication systems. And uh, really what I saw was an opportunity to leverage the strengths and the technologies and the capabilities that are being developed uh, in uh, the automotive industry and apply them in the aerospace industry, which is experiencing a major disruption now because we're using essentially microelectronics to manage flight, uh, for flight management, for sense and avoid, for connectivity. And there are many parallels between automotive and aerospace, which we're applying towards a more mass air mobility future. Um, so what we see is you know, opportunities to leverage these air vehicles, not only for just data collection, not only just package delivery, but passenger mobility. You know, we need to start looking at ways to reduce the pressure on the roads as the urban densities and populations grow over the next 15 years. We're going to see many, many cases of global gridlock taking place where fundamental uh, health care, uh, passenger mobility, and food will have a very difficult time moving around. So we see the remote an autonomous air vehicle uh, being a really high potential solution to some of the mobility challenges that we're going to be facing in the in the real immediate future. So when we talk about uh, air vehicles for you know this is the next generation of drones that to carry your goods and you know other stuff out. Uh, we look at space and I think there's empty so you know maybe a few of the air vehicles might not, you know, be that bit of a problem. But you can understand, you know, handling about you know, 8 billion population mm -hmm. the next few years, uh, it's going to be challenging. So when you plan these kind of activities, uh, are we looking at traffic problems up in the air? Absolutely. And it's a very good question because this is one of the problems that we have to anticipate as we have more and more air vehicles being used, whether it be for public safety agencies to monitor a fire or find a missing child or a utility company inspecting a power line or Amazon delivering a package or Uber delivering a person. How are we going to organize this traffic? And what I have said to folks is the answer is actually here, right here in Michigan. and quite frankly, out in Silicon Valley. You know, leveraging connected vehicle technology to facilitate collision avoidance, sequencing and separation, data, command and control, uh, broadcasting the three-dimensional travel ways whereby we can organize traffic. But it's the very same technologies that we've already developed on the ground that we're applying in the air to solve that problem. There are no highways and there are no traffic lights. Okay. Well, we still have intersections. We will still have, uh, you know, we will still have uh, airways where there will be different speed limits. Like, for instance, from 0 to 200 feet, it's going to be sort of a lower local traffic speed. And from 200 feet to 400 feet is more transient high-speed traffic. But... Um, you know, so we are working with the U.S. Department of Transportation on demonstrating a, a connected vehicle technology in the context of drones and drone traffic management. So airplane technology obviously is far advanced than the car technology. We have to catch up. So when you look at, you know, uh, in the future, when it will be a very consumer-driven uh, industry in terms of ownership, um, where do you see the connectivity part? Because 
there's always communications happening, right? And when you look at the civil aviation industry now, there's good communication happening in spite of your accidents. And if you enhance further to bring it to a mass scale, uh, any particular challenge you see that needs to be addressed? So from a communication standpoint, uh, you know, first and foremost, it's making sure that it's secure, um, making sure that it's able to route and sequence data and communications in a given priority. But uh, there'll be a few primary modes of managing communications. One's going to be LTE, another is going to be GP, uh, satellite. And in my view, uh, using connected vehicle technology is the other way of managing communications with ground-based infrastructure um, to share data with the cloud or to you know, share data with uh, users on the ground. So, For those uh, uh, entrepreneurs who want to enter into this space, mm -hmm. what is your advice? Well, I would definitely say uh, steer clear of the hardware side of the business. The hardware side of the business is obviously, as you know, very, very competitive given low-cost country manufacturing. Um, so really there's a lot of opportunities on the software side, right, for data processing, um, facilitating drone services on demand. Um, so for, for me, it's on the software side, the user interface side, uh, the collision avoidance side of the business. Uh, those are very, very promising areas where there's a lot of innovation happening because it's not necessarily about the hardware, it's about the software and the data that we collect at the moment. Um, I see this as, as a three-legged stool to the air vehicle business, data, cargo, passenger. We're sort of in the infancy of the data side. John, thank you. It's been a great speech. I'm ready to appreciate you coming. Oh my God, my pleasure. Thank you.